Hey, Seth David here from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time, we're going to talk about how to reconcile credit cards with cardholder accounts. So, this is when you have a master account on your statement, and each of the cardholders is a section on that statement, but ultimately, the balances of everything rolls up to that master account. And how do you set that up and then get it reconciled in QuickBooks Online? Let's take a look at my screen. I'll show you exactly how this works. So the first thing is, and if you've tried this, you may have run into this problem, is when you go to set up your online banking, I'll go to my chart of accounts. If you try to set up the master, let's say, that would be this account in the bank feeds, and then you try to set up sub accounts underneath that, you can't do it. You can't connect bank feeds to... Uh, to an account with sub accounts. In other words, any account with bank feeds has to stand on its own. So this is what you have to do instead. You create kind of a fictitious parent account, and then each of the sub each of the other accounts, including the master itself, becomes a sub account, right? And when you make payments on the credit card, you record them to the master because that's the one whose bank feeds the payments are going to show up in when you download the banking transaction. So you want them to be able to get matched up, right? So let's enter a few transactions so you can start to see what this looks like. And of course, let's run the balance sheet so we can kind of see the impact of this as we do it. So we'll go over to reports. And where's my standard? Okay, so you can see there's nothing in here yet. I don't have any transactions even in any of these credit card accounts. So let's get a couple of transactions entered on each of the cards real quick, right? So I'll create an expense. Now, of course, normally you would have downloaded this and matched it up, but let's say we've got some Amazon. Eh. And this is gonna be Capital One. And let's say this went to the master account, right? <clears throat> and let's say we bought some computer equipment and we spent $568, oops, $568.72. I'm just actually, eh, whatever, not that it's that important. But um, So we'll just put in like a random amount there and I'm going to hit save and new. And let's say we have some insurance company, right, that we paid. Okay, the category, of course, is going to be insurance expense. Okay, for $255. Oh, and the date. Let's put the date in there. And we'll go fix the other one. I've got a CSV from a statement up on my other screen that I'm using just so I can quickly grab some sample data and record it. Let's go back to Amazon. <coughs> And save that, and we'll say new. Now, those two went to the master. Let's go get some other ones. Okay, we'll get some more Amazon stuff. But this time, we'll say it went on to Clark Kent's card. Um, wait a minute. I thought I said save it new. <clears throat> this one's going to Clark Kent. Okay, and we'll save that. And then we'll do another one to Amazon on Jimmy Olsen's card. And his, of course, is going to be camera equipment, right? And we'll set that up as an expense. All right, 237. October 2nd. Save and new, and yes, and let's look at the balance sheet just to kind of see what this looks like so far. And this is how it should begin to take shape as you enter transactions, right? So we have some stuff in the master, right? 
Clark Kent, and Jimmy Olsen, and the grand total is 973.32 across all cards. Right. So let's say the statement came with that ending balance of 973.32. Actually, first let's make a payment. All right. Let's say we wanted to make an interim payment, so we're going to pay this to uh, Capital One. Okay, the payment account is coming out of our bank account. And let's say that was on the 13th. Now here's the tricky part, right? So we want to book this to the master, okay? Because that's, like I said, where it's going to show up in the bank feeds. And, and everything rolls up to the master on the statement. So it might be tempting to book it to the parent account, which you set up to kind of function like the master. But you don't want to do that because then it won't match up in the bank feed. So it has to be to the master account that's going to match up in the bank feeds. And then everything rolls up to this one for strictly for reconciliation purposes. That's the main point here. Okay. And I'll say save and close. Okay, and now let's say we get our statement and the ending balance is 673.32. So let's go to reconcile. Capital One. And here's where we use the parent account, right? The one that's not linked to any bank feeds. All right, 678.32. Ending date, let's say is 1031.20. Now, again, normally these would have been matched up in the online banking, so you'd see the icons alongside here. But what I'm getting at is even though these were all entered into the, the child accounts, the subsidiary accounts, they all roll up to the master so you can reconcile them at the master level. I'm going to hit select all. We're off by $5 because I probably entered the ending balance in incorrectly. Right, so let's fix that. 673.32. And, of course, it reconciles perfectly. But hold on. There's more, right? We're not done. And here's why we're not quite done yet. Let's go back to reports and look at the balance sheet. So if I didn't do anything more, you know, everything would be reconciled properly at the master level. But I would have these, you know, child account balances just kind of lingering, right? And remember, on the actual statement, these, the children, all get rolled up to the parent, right, or the master, rather. So we want to create an entry that closes out these two amounts to the master account once the statement's been reconciled, right? And the reason I don't want to do it, somebody emailed me and said they like to do this part first, and they said it's because it helps them reconcile more easily. I'm not sure why, because um, I was thinking about that, and all we're going to be doing is transferring these amounts out of these accounts and into here, and I think doing that ahead of time actually could create confusion because... It might, uh, it might be harder to see amounts that are sitting in these sub-accounts. So if it's working for you, do it. But I, I, I wouldn't be inclined to do it that way myself. So we want to create an entry that moves these two amounts out of these accounts and into this one, right? So I'm just going to make a note of these balances. I have 75.30 and 2.37 on another screen. And we're going to create a journal entry. Okay. And so I have... 7530. Now these are credit cards which are a liability. So they're increased by credits, they're decreased by debits. So let's put debit one for 7530, debit two for 237, and this is going to be the first capital one child account, which was Clark Kent, and this is going to be Jimmy Olsen. Okay, and the two are going to go to the capital one master, this account. Okay, and the reconciliation is already done, so this should zero these out and combine so the consolidated balance will end up in that Capital One Master account. This should be on the last day of the month or on whatever the reconciliation date happens to be if it's not the last day of the month. Okay, this is just to close it out to keep everything nice and clean. And I'll just update the journal entry number and save and close and yes. And now we have the ending balance perfectly rolled up here to the master, right? 
which again rolls up to the parent when we do the reconciliation. So you'll have the right beginning balance. You'll be able to reconcile next month very easily. And everything here is kept nice and clean. This exactly reflects how it ultimately winds up on the statement. In effect, that's what your credit card company is doing is they're closing out these child account balances each month to the master. So zero dollar impact, but we're just kind of consolidating everything into one final account. That, my friends, is how you reconcile credit card accounts where you have a parent and you have cardholder accounts and the statement comes with, with the master and all the activity rolling up into that master account ultimately. This is how you set it up in QuickBooks Online. That's how you get it reconciled. As always, I'm sure this goes without saying, but if you've got any comments or questions, post them below. Leave them in the comments below wherever you happen to be watching this. And as always, I hope you learned something here. I hope you had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.